Well, it's being described as a possible turning point in the war in Ukraine. Kyiv's forces have retaken control of yet another Russian military stronghold in the northeast. The events of the past 48 hours have signaled a dramatic new phase in the conflict, with Ukrainian President Zelensky saying his troops had retaken some 30 towns and villages in the northeastern Kharkiv region. And for more on this, we're joined by Peter Zelmeyev. He's director of the Eurasian, Eurasian Democracy Initiative. Uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, sure. Based on what we've seen in the last 48 hours with advances by Ukraine, would you say that this is a turning point in the war? Well, obviously, it's too soon to declare victory. It's too soon to uh, celebrate it, simply because, you know, when advances are so fast so rapid one has to uh, be proceed cautiously at some point so we will see whether you know the ukrainians will decide to consolidate their gains in the next few days or whether they will uh, go further but already this is being declared as probably the most significant victory in this war after the battle for kiev so far over 2000 uh, zelensky the president has said 2500 square kilometers may have been captured from the enemy. Uh, in just a few days, the Ukrainian troops have advanced 50 kilometers, capturing the city of Izum, which is a key Russian stronghold. It's a it's a key uh, railway um, transportation hub, uh, which at some point in the early in the war, at the beginning of uh, March and into April, the Russians threw a lot of forces to capture. So this seems like a significant tactical victory by the Ukrainians who seem to have outfoxed the Russians, who all these days were not even aware that this was being planned. Well, so how has Ukraine been able to make these advances uh, so swiftly? I mean, did this take you by surprise as someone who's been observing this conflict? You know, I was attending a, a major two-day conference here in Kiev, attended by Western leaders and American generals and uh, foreign ministers of several European countries, and, you know, all of them, one after another, the voice is there. Uh, pleasant secret from all of us. Uh, and so, yes, this is uh, a surprise. But on the other hand, we have known uh, that throughout this war, the Russian army has been dogged by a series of problems. The major one, the, mo the, the most important one, uh, which is a low morale. The Russian soldiers do not really have a good idea what they're fighting for. I would even say deep down they know this is not a, a righteous war. Whereas for Ukrainians, they know what they're fighting for. They're fighting for, for their families, for their future, for their country. What about the Russian response here? Was it that Russia didn't see this coming so swiftly, so fast? Yes, they did. And, you know, that explains uh, a sheer kind of uh, um, confusion on the faces of Russian propaganda TV hosts, you know, uh, you know over the last uh, few days. Uh, there's a chatter on Telegram channels, Russian Telegram channels, uh, which have where, you know, it's been pretty much acknowledged this is a significant defeat, even though the foreign ministry of Russia uh, claims that this has been a strategic retreat simply because they could not acknowledge this as a defeat, because everything in Russia is subjected to the whims of one person, Vladimir Putin. So this war has been going on for more than six months. Um, how do you envision the conflict ending? Well, uh, obviously, we'll still have to be uh, to, to end at the negotiating table. It's just that uh, it's a matter of uh, you know, changing the terms of engagement when it comes to negotiating with the Russians. So far, their conditions have been unacceptable to the Ukrainians, and they have involved significant loss of sovereignty, territory, etc. The Ukrainians have been very convincing in their demands that the only precondition for these talks would be a return to the pre- uh, February 24th borders. And with each victory, this seems like an imminent uh, reality, an imminent possibility. Okay, we'll leave it there. Uh, Peter Zalmeyev, director of the Eurasian Democracy Initiative. Thanks so much for your time tonight. Okay.